please. Are you ready? One, ready. two, three, go. I have to share my your screen, please. Yes. Justin, how do I do? Uh, it's a green button in the lower part. Okay. I go? Yes, go for it. Okay. Okay. It doesn't work. I'll... Ah, I have problem to go with. Uh, no Zoom. problem. Okay. Not the Alfredo. Okay. Alfredo. No. Uh, Emilio need to share the, the screen. No worries. Are you uh, clicking down where it says share screen? Here yeah. we go. Okay, you got you it. it. Yeah. Now just play. Okay. <laughs> so to change, let's talk to, uh, about occlusion. And um, in this webinar, I will focus on mastication and um, how you can integrate the um, analyze of mastication is, uh, in the clinical process. Um, I will give you some keys to be able to read Lore on local map of mastication. This is the goal. Um, sure, you will use your eyes differently, I think. Um, I have to advertise that if you are a fervent user of kind of guidance, just keep calm and enjoy. Okay. So um, briefly, where medication takes place, medication is a good way to enter into the education process, uh, as we talk about during the interview with you, uh, Javier, um, with Sami. But um, beware not to disconnect medication in a global view. Uh, global view or holistic view, uh, whatever the word you use. In my clinical process, I examine and check step-by-step -step cues, behavior, then balance, and after a lot of repetition where mastication will take place. So first step is to check the fuse. There are the why patients are coming to our office and when they feel worried, worry about about it and um, what does it make sense to compare with a fuse because when the fuse is blown two attitudes are possible first one is to replace the fuse and turn back the power and pray for your fuse doesn't blow again um, just think in this first attitude um, on your own experience thinking in um, Tooth getting a crack, so a compo, and that, then after a necrosis, so an endo, and a crown, or an anlay, and then a root, a root crack, and so an implant, and finally a perio implantitis, and a graft, and so on, and so on. Second option is to try to guess why the fuse is jumping and figure out what's causing so much trouble. So, depending on your advancement in occlusal knowledge, you will find clues to orient it towards an um, occlusal diagnosis. What is difficult is uh, to recognize an occlusal situation facing simple routine because we work in hurry, such as to crack, pio dentist. To periodontitis, auto migration, periodontitis, and on the really problems, on so this kind of problems. Um, the advice is to step back, um, try to find other clues such as mus muscle pains, TMG issues, growing process disturb, uh, postural issues, headaches, compression, compression in cervical spine, constricted airway on one dentistry, on one dentition, and so on. The thing is, is your fuse belong to an occlusal chain? That's the point. Second step is behavior, like biting, clenching, etc. 
The problem is the patient is not very aware on what they do with their job. So many things to say, but it's not the topic today to, um, it's uh, what we can say is how to drive the interview for the patient, how to collect the data, uh, not to pass as a mentally ill dentist, because it's very surprising when uh, the dentists uh, talk about that, uh, those, those points. Um, which advice to, to give? The goal is to make patients aware that stopping clenching as much as they can will protect more their shoes, not to get worse. Um, it will be helpful for the patient and um, for your practice too. Next point to examine is to work on a balanced jaw. No doubt that today with uh, all those fantastic speakers that uh, you will see, we'll find some tips and tricks to know how to catch a good uh, jaw position. Uh, I am used to play with different devices and adapt the tool depending on the situation, but the biggest issue for us is because it is so obvious. We focus on what is evident. So this MIP look well stable. It looks like. Um, first step in the occlusal approach is to ask by yourself if you can or if you cannot trust this MIP. So go for a step back. And just to explain, because it's a crucial problem that often the dentist doesn't understand that if you look at this, this uh, wheelbarrow standing in the garden, if you really pay attention and you analyze the enver environment around, you will figure out that maybe this wheelbarrow is not so, so standing, but uh, overturned in the garden. So after the programmation, if you ask your patient to close his mouth, you will discover if your MIP is overturned or not. And look at this case, contact in a position which is not MIP and then the jaw is kidding to reach MIP. So when you are looking at uh, MIP, you are looking at a position which is overturned for sure. So maybe the fuse yeah, you examine is suffering from this jaw deviation and the question is, do I have to conserve um, MIP or do I have to go for a new position of the jaw? Okay, so here we are. Fuse blown, is it connected to, uh, with occlusion? And then we have to be sure that the patient behavior won't throw a spanner in, in the works, damaging even more the, the fuse. Third point is um, to ask by yourself, is your MIP you are facing can be trusted? Is, an, is another position has to be tested or stabilized prior to treatment? Um, this is where you can uh, check for the occlusal plan and uh, what else on what else, but it's not the, the topic of the day. And then last question, uh, is when the jaw position is confirmed, is how to distribute the pressure in order to protect the fuse. So this is the point where it begins to be able to play with load distribution and to really fuse whatever they are. You have to learn a little bit more about uh, mastication. So let's focus on, I will show you how this dance together. Even in, if Francesca is a, a, a really good dancer, she didn't take the comparison, but she compared to a washing machine, which is a clever idea, but uh, so on is Francesca, you know. Um, the concept of mastication is a result of the work of uh, two men who were very clever too, uh, Marcel Legard and Jean-François Loret. It's a concept which is based on observation of uh, patient chewing, really chewing food in the real life. They spend their time taking pictures and movies from the patient and they abandoned asking patient to show their lateral movement. 
So how do they describe mastication cycle? Two phase. First one is a preparatory phase, remote from the teeth, no contact in between the teeth, which is beginning at the end of the previous cycle. Two events in, the, in this phase. One is open ear, and the, um, the one after is a closure of the jaw. And second phase, uh, which is a dental phase, uh, is with contacts. So we have three events. One is cycling, which is called entrance to, and to be able the jaw to reach MIP. And second phase is cycle out, um, which is called also exit. And MIP, in the point of view, is the apex of the of the cycle pattern in the frontal view. So let's focus on contacts uh, during cycle in phase. Uh, we are analyzing what's going on on the masticatory side. So here on the right side of the patient, very simple. Masticatory side on, on the opposite side, it's known as a non-masticatory side. So forget about walking side, balancing side, or what, uh, whatever name you, you, you know. And do not forget that if patients switch the food, because they will switch the food when they are eating on the other side, because you know mastication is unilateral, but alternate. alternate. So the non-masticatory side will become at the time it will become a masticatory side and vice versa. So let's see again what happened in, during this uh, phase of uh, cycle in movement. And clinically, what I'm drawing you here is a um, pattern of the summit of buccal lower cusp, getting contact on upper buccal cusp on right to reach MIP. Is it clear for you? Okay. And meanwhile, on the lingual side, the internal part of lower cusp are driven by upper palatal cusp on their lingual side by a point called entrance super point. Okay. So little details now uh, about, the, about the key of mastication. I named the couple of first molar, which is a very important couple of, uh, of uh, teeth. In a static point of view, you can observe that the upper molar is, um, the distal cusp of the first upper molar is diving above the first lower molar. And um, one thing that uh, Marcel and Jean-François noticed is the railway um, that you can find between second and third uh, buccal cusp on the lower first molar. You know the one that often the uh, lab technicians don't know what to do with and forget to include in our restoration. And putting them together, the lower V-shaped channel on the upper enamel bridge, it leads to an, an harmonious mastication movement. This is the principal point to check, the most important point that will help you to obtain a, a very kind cycle. And once uh, this reach MIP, uh, to leave out from this uh, position, here is the second phase starting. It's cycle out or exit. So let's have a look again on the motion because you have to integrate this notion. So here you have cycle in, reaching MIP, and then cycle out. Okay. I show it again to be clear. Cycling, MIP, cycle out. We are speaking about the masticatory side, okay? At this time, lower buccal cusp are able to crush foot against upper palatal cusp 
And here, it's a phase, um, in this phase, occlusal slopes, if you look at very, um, uh, very closely, you will find that the slopes are very flat and wide. And the reason is uh, certainly because they need to resist to the grid strain applied during this, uh, this phase, this exit phase, um, which is uh, you have to connect with anatomy on to guess what, uh, why uh, Carabelli tubercula exists. I think, and no doubt, it's a kind of mechanical resistance beam to, to resist to this uh, extraordinary uh, forces. And what is particular in this phase is the jaw needs to be driven by the proprioception of the opposite canine. So well innovated to get the, the guide the movement. Um, you can see on the left side, which is mastication side, you can see there is an inflection in the movement after, M uh, after MIP. The, um, the entrance is more lateral movement. Um, after reaching MIP, there is a change in the direction. Uh, that's why we need the canine on the opposite side to guide the, um, the, the movement. Um, um, it looks like a kind of lateral movement on the non-masticatory side, but it's not uh, really the same because in the same time you have contact on the masticatory side. So I will explain why in a while. To resume, uh, cycle out, uh, the difference is, um, uh, sorry, I missed something. Okay, so, so to resume, here we are looking for cycle out map. On master category side, you can read slopes of exit. And sorry, I go too fast. Um, on the non masticatory side, you can read a guidance of the canine. On Primola, you have to ask yourself is a patient, um, a, uh, because the patient has shoe on the two sides, uh, is it on exit, uh, exit slopes or entrance slopes? So you have to ask patient to to show again and to check if you have a congruence between the teeth during exit or entrance to know uh, if it belongs to uh, entrance or exit. So what makes difference between mastication concepts and lateral occlusion concept of uh, and lateral uh, guidance, kind of guidance developed by uh, D'Amico? Um, if I show you those animals to study medication, what would you do? I think you would probably record them when they are eating and trying to analyze. Um, what do we pay attention in our office is just to study, to study our office in patient no medication concern for sure. What we hope is we will find a very nice kind of guidance with a fantastic posterior desocclusion. That's gold in, in dentistry actually. But there is a big difference between mastication and, uh, and lateral occlusion. The difference is um, in physiologic of, um, of muscles. Here's the point. Cycle in recruits levator muscles, and that allow um, contact in uh, entrance guidance, where, whereas lateral movement recruits the lower lateral pterygoid on the opposite on the opposite side, which is a depressor on lateralizer mus muscle. So not the same muscles are involved that explain why you can have such difference in, in this contact. 
opposite action direction muscles leads to effects which, which are quite different logic. And same analysis from, from cycle out and lateral movement. In cycle out, you will get contact on the mastery side because you are recruiting levitus muscles. And whereas in lateral movement, you will recruit the opposite uh, lateral tegrate muscles. So um, that's why you can observe the absence of posterior contacts, uh, asking people to have a lateral movement. Um, on this same patient, you can find uh, some occlusal posterior wear, which, not, which are not logical with lateral movement. But this occlusal wear are not parafunctional, definitely not. Because if you ask people to cycle, to masticate, you will find congruence between uh, these teeth during mastication. So they are not parafunctional wear, but functional wear we don't explore. Asking patient to show lateral movement, which is a lateral non-functional movement instead of uh, functional movement of mastication. So now, how to explore mastication? Um, basically with the gum. Um, Hollywood Max is really great uh, uh, because very easy to hydrate, very easy to, um, to crush for, for a patient. And you have to connect um, this movement to occlusal marks which will reveal uh, the Loré on legal map of mastication. But be sure that the patient is not only biting the paper. You have to be sure that he is mastica masticating paper in order to get this map of mastication. So that's what you can see on the state of the paper, which is masticated here, OK? Um, now, have a look on uh, anterior teeth. Thinking in anterior teeth, we often think in uh, protrusion movement on anterior guidance. Forget it for a few moments and remember that the anterior teeth are involved in mastication too. So lower incisiva are traveling behind upper incisiva in this posterior view. And if you connect uh, mastication knowledge to planus heritage, you, it will give you a lot of key to understand periodontitis or auto migration, for example, concerning anterior teeth. So here, same story, muscles involved are different, so protrusion and incision can be the same, okay? Protrusions means uh, for a lot of us, Christensen's phenomenon, so posterior desocclusion, right? And on incision movement, you will observe posterior contacts, and on anterior teeth, you won't obtain neither same contacts, neither same strain compared to protrusion. According to what I explained, uh, does it make sense now why patients come after successfully equilibration done regarding to dogma? Why do they come to office? Why do they come back complaining about incomfort? Because we didn't explore all the all the, the physiological movement so now let's go for a few clinical consequences first one is knowing lore on the gal map of mastication you will be able to restore to build up marks to make patient able to shoot and what is impressive um, is no adaptation is needed if you achieve a good shape patient will be able to shoot directly Beware not to lose or disturb your position or not to lose the slopes that are already functional. The goal of um, this adjustment is to obtain a good envelope to, for shearing patterns. 
all cycle pattern depending on food you will you will eat are included in this under limit. When fencing missing slopes will influence the dense of condyle. If you see on the right side of the um, of the screen, the entrance guidance is missing. Proprioception doesn't work. Side shape will be uh, impact to be more vertical, but it comes also if the patient is clenched, impact the condyle dense and compress the entire part, the posterior part of temporomandibular joint, or it can be the disc we can go uh, in mesial place. Uh, you can decline it for support of entrance is missing on, uh, on the right side. The condyle will dance in the other way and will lead to other issue. So you have to decline all these consequences to each phase of mastication, sinking in over guidance or infra guidance, which make a lot of situation and connect all this observation with the fuse that has blown. Um, so knowing, knowing lower on the legal map of mastication, you will be able to connect mastication on symptoms. Here, I guess you can see that entrance guidance is missing on first and second molar uh, on, the, on the right side of the patient. On saga, second premolar entrance guidance is not so fantastic. Support point looks good and exec looks good. Many lab consequences to, to tell just one is in order to chew in the sagittal view, condyle on the masticatory side needs to go a little bit backward to before going forward to reach MIP. So that's why condyle can be so retreated in MIP and information that will be pleased, Javier, I think. Um, on physic physical articulators, the problem is Often we can't do this movement because the posterior wall of the condylar, condylar box can't make the, the movement happen. Um, the question is why on vitreal articulators the patient is not the reference. It should be because physical articulators have been copied from digital articulators. That's the question. Um, and a point which is very interesting in, um, according to a study of Marcel Legal and his son, Nicolas Legal, occlusal shame has a huge, huge impact on pain implant, implant bone level. Improving mastication showing patterns they manage to gain 1.3 millimeters average of highness bone around implants. So clinically, when I face a U-shaped bone defect, I check occlusion and mastication first. Last question for septics of you. How did you shoe while you were six old to your 12 years old without any canine? This is the question. Here you can figure out the importance of the first molar into the well setting of the denture. And you can figure consequences if your auto treatment rotates more to expand the palate, which is a good idea. But you are rotating the molar, you are removing the proprioception key of mastication. So you are removing the key of stimulation and so the key of the growing process. Um, you can figure out the importance, the importance of the phase before six years old to make to make uh, happen a good efficiency of um, first molar couple. This is a, a very crucial point. You can find many other information on the, on the website of um, um, Marcel Legal, which is masticationppp.net, in English and French, many publication. I hope you enjoy. Um, if you want to know more, to go deeper, or take time to integrate, integrate uh, this concept in your practice, come and visit our super island in Indian Ocean, uh, or tell me I love traveling. Yes, oh my God, you were totally right. My head is gonna explode. If you see me when you were lecturing, I was I checking myself. 
and now I've seen. Now I don't even know if I'm gonna show you the video of the two cases that I that I'm gonna present tonight. My God, honestly, <laughs> this is fascinating. I love to learn. I guess the beautiful people work. Also, yes. Oh my God, so much, so much to think. So now to I think that yes, exactly. No, but much is also too much to be able to see because it's a challenge to see inside. So that's why this technology that is coming about your trackers with optical cameras and all that is going to become really handy because honestly, I think it's really difficult. You made beautiful points. Honestly, God is amazing. This is the conclusion. Uh, How perfect you know, he is. You know, you know what I think? Uh, there, is, there is some connection between... Uh, what they're doing and uh, what uh, Dr. Kirstein was talking about, the neurophysiology of the teeth. Um, there is something that they are correcting in this functional movement checking and this masticatory, this masticatory correction that, that uh, must settle the, the whole nervous system. Um, so th there's, there's so much interconnectivity between our uh, our speakers um, i mean uh, so so much thing to add because yes. uh, it's a little part of the oh i'm sure i'm sure half an hour is barely enough to scratch the surface right yeah oh yeah. my <laughs> god no but really fascinated it opens a lot of perspectives so it's uh, really amazing no the last two things that you say like uh, how i was thinking the first smaller honestly what just to hold vertical dimension but now it makes sense. He hammers and helps to form the fossa. And also the caravelli uh, tubercle is so important. It's not an aesthetic feature for sure. It's reinforcing the hammer because that's the matching. And that things make sense, you know? So this is honestly really, really fascinating. Again, I recommend, we recommend the people honestly to go. Uh, Dr. Legal uh, has all these publications for free in the website. Uh, his interest, his people has access to this. Believe me that he's a really important person and he's giving us a great legacy. Um, we hope, and we know that he's having some uh, medical issues. Uh, Emilio, we don't want to go deep, mm -hmm. but we have, I never have the opportunity to meet him, but always my dream was to be able to meet him and Emilio was trying to try to 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 For create a bridge. There is a formation in Strasbourg with um, uh, in University of Strasbourg with uh, Roger Jorger, and Roger Jorger is is um, a speaker too. He's a German. He can speak German. For German people, it's interesting. Yeah, that's awesome. And definitely, as we've been talking for. Uh, since we met definitely we're gonna bring you here and then you definitely need to share with us because this is a fascinating war and it's mm -hmm. yeah, worth it to go deeper as a fact you went really good with time i know yeah this is the the what? you know i had heard about the swiss uh uh exact next but now we're seeing another side of the french Tropi uh, tropical time <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much milio Thank you. As always, this has been a pleasure. Mm. Emilio, thank you so much. We're having a technical issue with the next speaker. Let's see what's going on. So we can technically keep Emilio in the line. Mitch, can you check if there's any <laughs> questions? Uh, I know Lawrence already uh, got, the, got the email. He should be connecting shortly. But yeah. uh, check, can, we, can you check social media? Because Natalia is still using my phone now, so I can know. Check if it's any question for the audience, please. Yeah. Okay, I get another phone over here. Okay. Excellent presentation. Okay, we don't have questions. No, so all right, questions. we're good to go, I think. Okay, we got it. Got it, bye-bye. I bet, Emilio, we bye. love you. Thank you so much for everything. Yeah. We wait. We have another winner. Winner number two. <laughs>